Over the next series of lectures, I'm going to walk you through how I'm currently using GraphQL with Vue 3 and an entirely type safe setup. We're going to be using the following technologies, GraphQL, Express GraphQL, Urkel for the front end, Nexus GraphQL and Nexus decorators for getting type safety, and GraphQL code generator for generating the queries on the front end. Let's go ahead and get started. The first series of lectures are going to be about setting up GraphQL with Vue 3 and Urkel, and then we're going to move on and make everything type safe. Let's get started. So for now, all I have is a single file called server.ts, and we're going to start writing our server right here. The first thing we're going to need to do is import a few things. Namely, we're going to need the GraphQL middleware, GraphQL HTTPP. We're also going to go ahead and import the build schema function from GraphQL. Uh, that's the wrong, wrong one, it should be GraphQL. And this is how we're going to create our schema. Finally, we're going to need an Express app, so I'm just going to go ahead and import Express from Express. The next thing we're going to do is start defining our schema. So let's go ahead and create a new schema, and we're going to do that using the build schema uh, API. It's all going to just be a string literal for now. Eventually, this entire thing is going to be automatically generated anyway, so I'm happy with this just for the time being. We're going to go ahead and define some types. The first one is going to be called app, and this is just going to be our top level type. It's going to contain all of our data. In this case, we're going to have books, and this is going to be an array of books. They're going to be non-nullable, that's what this represents, and the array is going to be non-nullable as well. So if there's no books, it's just going to be an empty array. Now that we have a book type, let's go ahead and create a book type as well. This one's going to be fairly simple for now. We're just going to have an ID and a title. Both are going to be non-nullable strings. Finally, we need some way to interact with this. So we're going to use one of the very few top level types in GraphQL, which is going to be query. We're just going to expose app here, and it's going to be a non-nullable app, which contains an array of non-nullable books. Now that we have our schema, let's go ahead and spin up our middleware. The first thing we're going to do is create a new app, it's just going to be an express app, and we're now going to go ahead and use the GraphQL middleware, and that's going to be on our GraphQL endpoint. Let's go ahead and pass that one in, and it takes a function which returns an array or an object of options. The first option we're going to pass is the schema, and that's actually all we need to pass to get this one working. Finally, let's go ahead and app listen on port 4000, and give this one a try. So you can see we've defined our schema up here, but we haven't actually created any data, and we're going to see how this works in just a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and run yarn ts node dev just to spin up our server. The next thing we're going to need to do is head to localhost 4000, and we're actually not going to see anything here. You can get a nice UI to interact with your GraphQL API, and the way you do that is by passing graphical true down here inside of your middleware. If we head back now and give it another try, we can see we have this nice UI. And because we're using GraphQL and we defined that schema earlier, everything is going to have a nice type safety for us, or at least we're going to get some recommendations. You can see here it's recommending app, and if I click on this, it's going to give me the app type, contains the types for books, and it has strongly typed uh, fields here for ID and title. Let's go ahead and try and query that one right now and see what we get. We can see we're getting an error, cannot return null for non-nullable field query.app. So GraphQL knows that the app field cannot be null, but you can see over here we're not actually supplying any data, we just have our schema. What we need to do is define a resolver, and that one goes here inside of root value. What this is going to do is be an object with a function or a number of functions that corresponds to our data up here. So for example, for the app field, I'm going to have a function. It takes several arguments. The first is going to be irrelevant here. And the second is going to be something called context, which we're going to type in a moment. What we need to do here is return what GraphQL is expecting. So it respects the app field to return an app, which is going to contain an array of books. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to return app inside of here, and this is going to contain an object. Let's just go ahead and give this one a try and see if we get a different error now. If we head back to our API and run this one again, we are getting a different error. It says cannot return null for non-nullable field app.books. So app is no longer null, so the error is gone, but books is null and it can't be null. So let's go ahead and fix that one up. We can already see a few problems are emerging here. Namely, we have two sets of source or two sources of truth for our types and our, our values. We have our type definitions up here, but these are completely separate from what we're typing down here. 
In fact, I've said this can be any type, it has no type definitions at all, and this is going to be a problem. The end goal of this entire series is going to be having a single source of truth for both our GraphQL schema as well as our data definitions. For now, let's just go ahead and get this one working. It is expecting an array of books, and if we make this an array, it is now going to be valid. You can see this app books is mirroring what we have up here, app and books. If we head back to our API now and run this one again, we're still getting an error here. Let's try to refresh the page and give it one more try, and this is still not working. I think I've made a mistake down here, and you can see the problem with having no type definitions. It is very easy to make these kind of mistakes. My server has been restarted correctly, so I potentially need to go ahead and just return books instead. Let's go ahead and give it one more try. We can see this is now working correctly. So uh, we can already see some of the problems we're going to have with a lack of type definitions and TypeScript, and we're going to look to alleviate those in the near future. Anyway, just to finish this one off, what we're going to do is actually return some data in here, just to show you how this one works. We're going to have an ID of one, and we're just going to have a title of, let's say, title for now. If we save this one off and head back to our browser, we should be able to query this data. And we can see this is now working correctly. We are getting the correct response. The final thing we're going to do is add a context, and that's going to be kind of like an in-memory database, and it's going to allow us to persist data across requests. And this is going to be very useful when we update the front end to be able to actually persist some new books to our endpoint. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new variable called context, and this is going to, going to contain an app value. It's basically going to mirror our types, and we can see again we're duplicating our type definitions here. We have app and app. Inside of here we're going to have an array of books, and that's just going to be the data that we created down here. So let's go ahead and paste that one in. With a bit of luck this is now going to work correctly. All I need to do is come down here and return the context instead. And this is going to come as a second argument to my resolver, so inside of here. I need to make sure I pass my context down here. And just to get a little bit of type safety, I'm going to say type of context, which means we have to declare this one as a const. You can see we're going to hopefully get slightly better type definitions here. If I go ahead and type this correctly, context is going to have the correct types. And this is definitely an improvement. It's not going to be ideal because we are duplicating our type definitions, but it's going to at least give us a better start than we had before. Finally, if I head back to my browser and run this, everything is going to fail now. It looks like I've made a mistake again. Cannot return null for non-nullable field app.books. What I think we need to do is return context.app instead. Finally, we'll give this one more try and we are back to where we started. We're going to end up using Nexus later on, which is going to alleviate all of these typos, so look forward to that. We now have a working GraphQL backend, and the next step is going to be hooking up Vue using the front end and using a front end client called Urkel.